Just because it's a quickie doesn't mean it is one. One informal fallacy that gets thrown around a lot is the correlation causation fallacy. But it's important to understand when it applies and when it doesn't. The more formalized fallacy is cum hoc ergo proctor hoc, in English, along with the fact, therefore because of the fact. Two things that happen more or less together are wrongly given a causal link. Classic example. The symptoms of autism generally show up around three years of age, the same age kids are getting a lot of their vaccines. So a parent gets a child vaccinated, then soon after they see symptoms of autism. So they blame the vaccine for it, even though autism actually starts very early on in fetal development. But it's getting thrown around way too often when it just doesn't apply. It's true that correlation doesn't always imply causation, but it's led to this idea among pseudo-skeptics that you can't ever infer any causation from a statistical analysis. You can. In fact, that's often the whole point of a statistical analysis. What you need is a correlation among a sufficient number of data points along with a causal network. In other words, a theoretical underpinning that allows for the causation and the statistics to rule out enough of the other possibilities that the cause can be shown to be responsible for at least part of the effect. Oh, and this is important, you have to specify it all ahead of time. A related fallacy is getting coefficient of determination, noted as R squared, confused with statistical significance. Some people believe that a low R squared means the results are insignificant and don't show causation. Wrong! It only means that there are other causes that also contribute to the effect. R squared shows how much of an effect the cause has amidst all the other confounding factors. When you have an observed correlation from a statistical regression that is predicted by the relevant theory, then correlation absolutely can imply causation. Thank you.